Hey, I bet by the end of this video, you're going to learn a lot about the new features of MPC Firmware 3. Some of the features are really exciting, and one is definitely a game changer. But is it worth it? In this video, you'll learn about the key features and workflows of MPC 3. Let's start with the basics. Firmware 3 can be installed on current standalone MPC hardware. Here we have the MPC-1 with Firmware 3 installed and we'll be using it for this tutorial. Currently, this firmware is in public beta. You can go to AkaiPro's website to download the beta release. The final release should be out soon. Headline features of the new firmware include an updated graphical interface and a linear arrangement mode. There are several additional features such as sample layering, disk streaming, bouncing pads to stems, Q-Link macros, a new XL channel strip, and more. With some of these new features, it changes the experience with the device and therefore alters the workflow from previous generations of MPCs. Firmware 3 is the biggest change to the experience of the MPC since the MPC Touch was released in 2015. So let's look at some of the new features. The updated graphical user interface is a major feature of Firmware 3. It's modern, colorful, and welcome for 2025. The icons have been updated with color and depth, and color in general plays a more significant role in organizing not only pads, but now tracks. In grid mode, we see each pad in its assigned color on the left of the screen. When we enter the new arrangement view, we can see tracks and their assigned colors on the left. Notes within that track follow the same color. It makes the experience very modern, mature, and DAW-like. More on arrangement view later. The main mode screen has been updated. The layout has changed, and there's much more strategic use of color. For comparison, here's the previous version of the main screen on the MPC Live 2. This was a game changer for the MPC when it first came out. Let's back up a minute for some context. It was the year 2015. The MPC Renaissance and Studio were Akai's current offerings with small monochrome displays that date all the way back to the original MPC 60 designed by Roger Lin in 1988. Akai released the MPC Touch in 2015 and then the Live in 2017. These devices changed the direction of the platform with their large colorful touchscreen displays, which reinvigorated the interface and thus the MPC lineup. At that time, it was a huge difference, like going from a flip phone to an iPhone. But after almost 10 years of use without a graphics refresh, it feels stale. Could you imagine if Apple used the same graphics on the iPhone for 10 years? Yeah, not happening. Okay, back to the Live 2 and the current main mode page. To familiarize those who are new to the MPC, at the top we have the project settings, then sequence settings, then track settings, then program settings. This layout also represents the hierarchy of basic concepts and elements within the MPC. Additionally, on the left, we have shortcut icons, a meter, and at the bottom, we have buttons relating to track settings. Looking at the main mode page of MPC3, we can see it's different yet familiar. The appearance is different, but the layout is similar. From the top, we have project settings, then sequence settings, then track settings. The track section is where the bulk of changes were made. There's now tabs that allow you to switch between track info and arrangement info. You can start the arrangement here and there's feedback about playback. More on arrangement later. There's now a view of the sample of each pad, which is awesome. Notice how the color of the waveform matches the pad's color. Also, notice the new layer button. This new feature allows you to layer multiple samples within each pad. Use this feature to quickly create unique sounds with up to eight layers per pad. That's a dope new feature. Another convenient feature in the track section is the ability to record directly into a pad. Let's switch banks to find some empty pads. In the sample window, we now have the option to browse to load a sample, or we can record a new sample. Press record and select a pad and follow the same steps as recording in sampler mode. On the left, we see two audio meters. One is for the track output level and the other is for the main output level. Tapping the header of these expands them. This is what Akai calls the XL channel strip. Here you can adjust the level, pan, add effects, send amounts, routing, and common settings such as mute, solo, and arm to record. Press the header again to collapse the XL channel strip. 
At the bottom of the screen, they added a new track button. Press this to add a new track. A pop-up will ask you to select the type of track you want to add. More on this later. Did you notice what is missing from the main menu screen? Experienced users may have noticed that the program section is missing from main mode. Let's quickly address this for those users who are having a bit of a panic, but new users will want to know this also. On the MPC, programs are the container file for samples so they can be used in a track. They've been a part of the MPC since the beginning. Stock samples were basic and limited, encouraging users to add their own. Some users invested a lot of time into sampling and creating their own programs for use in their projects. So what happened to programs and can you still use them? Modern MPCs come with a ton of content. If you browse to drums, you can see them listed and they can still be loaded. But now, instead of them being loaded at the project level, they are loaded directly into the track level. Note, when you browse and load a program, it will replace the existing one in the currently selected track. Otherwise, you can select the Load to New Track button at the bottom of the screen. So, programs still exist, but they have become a background element. It's more intuitive to load a drum kit directly into a track and not have to think about that extra layer of information. Further, users can still create their own programs by loading or recording samples into a track, like we learned earlier, and saving them for later use. To save a program, press Menu. On the screen, press Save. Then select Drum Program. Navigate to a location, name the program, and press Save. Before we get into a range view, please subscribe if you learned something. I really appreciate it and it helps motivate me to make more content like this. A headline feature of Firmware 3 is the new Arrange View. With this, you get a comprehensive view of a sequence showing all its tracks and notes within them. It provides an experience similar to a DAW, allowing you to make elaborate and complex arrangements in an intuitive way. And it's a game changer for the MPC. Side note, Akai Force has had Arrangement View for many years, and MPC users have been requesting it ever since. Luckily, Akai listened, and now it's here. Before Arranger View, the best we had was Grid View, which showed all of the notes of a track. In Grid View, you can zoom in and out, write, erase, and move notes via the touchscreen, which was revolutionary when it was first released. But a key detail of Grid View is that it only shows one track at a time. Now enter the new Arrange View, which you can get to in a few ways. You can press the Menu button and then select the Arrange icon on the screen. You can also press and hold Shift and Main, bringing you to Grid View. Then on the screen, press Arrange. Since you're likely to use it often, let's quickly save a shortcut. Press Menu. Press and hold the Arrange icon. Then drag it to the Shortcuts area on the left of the screen and replace another icon. Now you can quickly get to Arrange View. Let's back up for a second and explore the new Arrange tab within the Track section of Main Mode. Selecting this tab shows the notes of the track, and there's a play button to the right which starts playback. Above the view of notes, you see buttons to aid recording. From the left, you have buttons for auto recording, where you can turn off and on auto record, punch in where recording starts at the punch in location set on the right, and loop start, where recording starts when playback reaches the loop start point. You can see the loop area below, which is the white rectangle at the top of the timeline. You can press and hold the start and end points to adjust the loop region. Now this tab being called Arrangement is a little bit of a misnomer because it's really grid view. The notes we see in this section are only the current track and not the full arrangement of all tracks. Double tap the notes area and you go to grid view. Press the Arrange button at the top left to enter Arrange View. Now we see the complete arrangement including all tracks. Let's explore Arrange View more closely. Each track is listed on the left side. Press and hold the Tracks label to show options and settings for that track. Use the Q-Link encoders to adjust settings and navigate the view. MPCX users have an advantage here with the extra Q-Link encoders on that unit. On other devices, press the Q-Link button to cycle through different settings for these encoders. Press the Edit button at the top of the screen to make changes to the sequence. Press the gear icon to make changes to grid settings. At the bottom of the screen, there are additional buttons. TC brings up timing correct or quantization settings. 
Buses brings up return and output bus tracks. MIDI Rec Erase changes how notes are recorded into a track. When enabled, new notes will replace existing notes. When disabled, new notes will overdub and merge with existing notes. Loop toggles between repeating the loop region or playing the arrangement to the end. Also, you can touch the top of the timeline to move the playhead to that location. If the arrangement is playing, it will instantly start playing where you touched. If the arrangement is stopped, the playhead will move and wait. Press the play button to start playback from the current playhead location. Another useful feature of Arrange View is the ability to add locator markers throughout the arrangement. As your arrangement grows and becomes more complex, you can add markers at specific points so that you can quickly move the playhead to them. This is really useful while you're writing and editing. You can have six locators per arrangement. Let's add a locator. First, let's move the playhead where you want to add the marker. You can do this by touching the top of the arrangement or tap the bars beats ticks field and use the large data dial. Make note of the playhead position in the bars beats ticks field. To add and edit locators, double tap the bars, beats, and ticks field. This brings up the locate pop-up, then press the locators tab. On an available locator, select the bars field and use the large data dial to match where the playhead is. In other words, where you want the locator. A quick note to Akai, adding locators could be streamlined if there was a button to populate the locator based on the current playhead location. Otherwise, users have to make note of the location before entering the screen to add a locator. You can add a name to each locator to be more intuitive. And you can also assign a color to each locator using the eyedropper button. Lastly, you can delete a locator with the X button. Close this screen when finished. Now you can see the locator in the arrangement. To move the playhead to a locator, press and hold shift and select the locator at the bottom of the screen. Press play to start playback at the selected locator. Adding tracks can be done in a few different ways. In Arrange View, press the plus button at the left side of the screen. You may need to scroll to the bottom of the arrangement to see it. A pop-up window will ask you to select the type of track you wish to add. Also in the pop-up window, press the Advanced button at the bottom of the screen for more options when adding a track. One thing to know about adding drum tracks is that they will be empty. By that I mean without a program or samples. That seems silly to say. Let's say you add a drum track. There's no default kit it loads or prompt to browse for a kit. Therefore, press Browse to find and load a kit. Then press and hold Shift and Main to get to Grid View. Press the Arrange button at the top of the screen to return to Arrange View. A note to Akai, it would be more efficient and intuitive to add kits within the Add Track pop-up. Maybe this could be done in the Advanced Add Track menu. Akai also, why not have an option to add or swap content in the Track Edit menu? Whether you just added a track that is empty or you want to audition other kits, adding this option under the track menu keeps users in a range view for a more efficient workflow. Akai, one more thing. If the browse menu had a close button at the bottom, this would allow users to close the browse menu and return to the last screen they were in. This saves the extra steps of navigating back to a range view after browsing and loading content. Thanks Akai, L for love. To edit notes in a range view, you will need to use the track editor. There's two ways to access this feature. First, select the track you wish to edit, then press the up arrow at the bottom of the screen. This splits the screen with the arrangement at the top and the track editor below. Close the track editor by pressing the down arrow on the screen. The other way to open the track editor is to double tap the notes of the track you want to edit. You can also press and drag the horizontal divider to change the visible area of arrangement versus grid view. Once you're happy with your arrangement, you'll likely want to export it. Let's look at what export options there are and how to export them. To export an audio file, press the menu button, then save on the bottom of the screen. Select audio mix down. A menu will appear and you can adjust settings. The default settings will create a 24-bit WAV file but you can select other file formats including AIFF, FLAC, and MP3. Bitrate can be adjusted from 8-bit to 32-bit float, and sample rate can be adjusted up to 96 kHz. 
There's a ton of settings. Press export when ready to continue. Then select a destination for the file, name it, and press save at the bottom of the screen. Ableton users will be excited to know that you can export your arrangement to an Ableton Live project file. Press menu, then save on the screen. Then Ableton Live set. A menu comes up. You can change settings and press export. Navigate to a location, name the file, and press save. Now in my tests, I wasn't able to open the MPC created files in Live 11 or 12. I'm assuming this beta version of the software has a bug to resolve. Hopefully that will get resolved before the official release of MPC3. A quick note to Akai, there's a bug when exporting Ableton Live files. There are some additional notes about MPC3. Sequences are the black swan of MPC3. They have a section in main mode, but arrangement view doesn't allow you to switch between them and it doesn't seem like you're supposed to. Instead, I think the workflow Akai assumes is that your project has one sequence for your entire song, and arrange view is how you navigate that one large sequence. When looking at demo songs, that's how they're arranged, and this follows the workflow you would use in most DAWs, one linear arrangement for a song with locators to stay organized. For existing users who make use of sequences, they may be forced to adapt a different workflow. One thing I'd love to see is an open project button on the startup screen. Let's say you've been working on something. Later, you fire up the MPC and you want to keep working on it. The startup screen doesn't give you that option and assumes you're always starting something new. The browse button is disabled in the screen also. So you have to select new project to quickly get past the startup screen, then press browse to find and load the previous project you are working on. It seems obvious to have an open project button on the startup screen. Dear Akai, please add this feature. Dear viewers, I've got more notes for you. If you're interested in making your own programs and drum kits, I've just released a free sample pack on alliloops.com. There's a link in the description. Speaking of free stuff, subscribing is a free way to support this channel and it helps me continue to make awesome videos to help you. Join an awesome community by subscribing. I want to hear from you. Comment about what you think about MPC Firmware 3. Is it worth it for you? Lastly, the best way to learn is to practice. Have fun and thanks for watching. Peace.